You're listening to MPS Connections with your host, AJ Hoffman. Welcome to MPS Connections. I'm your host, AJ Hoffman. I am joined today by Bridget Sova, who is the Region 4 Michigan Teacher of the Year. How are you doing today, Bridget? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me on, AJ. Well, thanks for being here, mm-hmm. and congratulations. You've had a pretty big day today, so um, it was, that's a pretty big honor, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just, you know, it's, it is an honor, very humbling, and um, very happy to represent our region for this award. Awesome. Can you give me a little bit about your background? Tell me, tell me where you came from and what got you into teaching and, and uh, a little bit about that stuff. Absolutely. Um, I was uh, born and raised in the Flint area, so I went to Davison and to Grand Blanc Public Schools. Um, both my parents were teachers, and um, so I definitely, um, along with my, my grandmother, who um, kind of ran her own one-room schoolhouse, um, she, uh, my, my grandmother had eight children, but she had 63 foster children in an amount of 23 years. Holy cow. So, right. So she kind of ran her own one-room schoolhouse. Um, but both my parents, like I said, were teachers for Goodrich Public Schools. And, um, and I think that, um, you know, with observing them and participating in their classroom activities um, really influenced my decision to become a teacher. Um, and then I went to Central Michigan University and then on to Saginaw Valley State University uh, for my master's program in administration. But I began my teaching career down in Battle Creek, Michigan. And um, because I had done, I had completed my student teaching with Midland Public Schools at Parkdale Elementary School. Um, Brad Vandervliet was my um, principal there. And it was, um, um, it was underneath Barb Kneebone, and it was uh, just a really positive experience. Um, I just knew I really, really wanted to be in Midland Public Schools, but unfortunately, I graduated in December, and there were no positions available at that time. So I went down to Battle Creek Public Schools, um, and um, after six months, I received a phone call from Brad Vandervliet, who asked if um, asked how things were going which I thought was how kind to have him reach out. And, but he was asking if I would be interested in interviewing for a position in Midland Public Schools. And it just so happened that Barb Kneebone, my supervising teacher during student teaching, was moving into teaching um, the general ed population. And her position, which I had felt at the time was my dream position, which was working with students with cognitive disabilities um, in the elementary level. And so, oh, I was just thrilled to come back, and um, and I, I love the city. Um, be in a lot of it had to do, I think, with the um, the Grace A. Dow Library was um, something I felt was um, you know a wonderful platform to have here in in a city this size. I felt that it was just a beautiful library and um, in you know, a cornerstone of, of our city. And therefore, I, I just was thrilled to come back and, um, and had taught at, at the elementary for some time and then up to the middle school. I went on to teaching at Northeast Middle School um, and then um, had the opportunity to go back and work with the students with cognitive disabilities again and in, in currently at H.H. Dow High School. So you've done every grade level so far. I have. I have taught, yes, I have taught um, because the students with with, um, disabilities at the elementary level, um, you teach a range of grade levels. And so, yes, I have taught um, there at the K through fifth, every grade level, and then on to Northeast again, um, every grade level. Um, There was a period there that um, I taught students with learning disabilities in sixth grade for approximately 12 to 15 years um, and, um, and had the opportunity to work on um, every team there at Northeast at, uh, in the sixth grade level. And, and, just, um, and I think that that was just a really, um, a really growing period for myself as a teacher because I was in so many different teachers' classrooms. And, um, and that was really, that experience, um, I, I stole all of their great ideas. And I, and I think that that is something that every teacher, that is, what really did help me, um, I feel, become 
a better teacher. Um, and I still use so many of their strategies and techniques in my classroom today. So I feel very fortunate that I had that opportunity before I went on to teach at Dow High. Now, a, a lot of people might not know, but special ed doesn't, it, it's not like one big group. They're, it's kind of divided into two different, um, how do we say, categories or, or th there's, there's CI, there's cognitive impairments, there's LD, learning disability, there's SXI, which is multiply, right. severely multiply impaired. Um, the, there's AI, which is autism. Right. right. All so, of the levels of support. Yeah. There's many different varieties of levels of support that are needed for our students. I knew you'd be able to say it better than Yes. Me. No, yeah. no, not absolutely. And, and, um, and, you know, and I have had the opportunity to work with many of those different levels. And, um, and I think that that is also what makes Midland Public um, such a great district that we can offer students of, you know, Whoever walks through our door, we're able to support them in whatever needs they have. Um, and um, in that, you know, we bring in the families, um, and often we try to bring in the student in and listening to what their needs are. And there's, um, you know, it, it's, it's the programming is endless because even within the program at Dow High, which I currently teach, we would say that the category I teach in is the CI, which is cognitive impaired, but the students I have in my program have access to any class at Dow High. If they have um, a special interest in arts, in the arts, um, we have some of the best art teachers there to, um, ex you know, take them into any of the classes. And um, and I think that that's that is um, really unique in that, um, you know, we can therefore, you know, hold um, the level of of um, whatever level that they've come to us at, we are able to meet those needs by putting them in the you know the classes that they need, but not necessarily holding them to the programming that that they were assigned to. Right to kind of meet a level of inclusivity that that not other. That's something I've noticed. You know, not only did, like, since I was a, a student and all all the way through. Like, working in the district too, I've noticed that MPS probably, you know, and it's going to sound biased, but they do it better than anybody else, any other district, as far as being inclusive and making sure that, that, um, uh, you know, students with special needs are, are more, um, yeah, integrated into gen ed classes and accepted. And can you talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you're exactly right. And I think that we often have families who move in from out of town and even out of state. We have parents that would say, I would love for us to move to a certain certain area or a state, but they said that we can't leave until their student, their child graduates right. because they understand that the level of programming that they are getting here, and, and it's not even just even, we're so fortunate that it's not even just even within our school district, our community has so many resources available. So um, there are many organizations that it takes to be sure that um, our students have um, all, that they, all that they need to have a productive adulthood. And so um, I think it's just that we, that what we do well is that it's, you know, we're all interwoven with each other and our, our school district is with like the ARC of Midland or with um, uh, Disability Network. Um, we also have um, um, the, it's called MERS and it's um, uh, Michigan Rehabilitation Services. Sure. Um, so, so many different organizations need to come together to be sure that um, that our, our students, you know, that once that they graduate and, and the students I work with can go to, to public school until they're age 26. So um, after age 26, you know, we want to be sure that they have the housing and, and um, that they've had job training and transportation set up for them so that they can have a, um, a fulfilling life and, and, can, and can be a contributing member of our community and we want them to um, you know, just have a lot of success. And so that's our job is to be sure that once that they have reached that level of adulthood that, that, um, you know, that we've worked together 
with their families as well to um, to set that programming up for them. That, that's something I wish I could we could we could do a whole podcast on is uh, students are you know they have that that access to uh, public education until they're 26, but in a lot of other districts they kind of fall through the cracks. And in NPS, there's so, or it, just in, in Midland, we have so many resources and they all do such a good job of working together that it, it's, um, yeah, they, there's more success stories here in Midland than there are probably in, in other towns. So, yeah, that's that's really nice. But like I said, we could do a whole podcast on just that alone. What I want to get to is talking about um, the uh, the award that you got. Can you talk about... This, this is a long time coming, and, and um, you put in a lot of work to earn this. Mm-hmm. Not bragging about yourself, mm-hmm. but having to reflect over a 30-year career and talking about some of the highlights. And, you know, right. why, not only why your, your career should be highlighted, but why the district should be highlighted or why, why Midland Public Schools is such a special place to be. Right. So, so some of the prompts were about asking about um, why maybe I went into teaching and what has you know what was my inspiration and so on. But but some of the prompts were also about what my thoughts were on teacher evaluation, and so that really made me think deeply about um, you know about all the different ways that we are evaluated. Um, and um, and it also made me seek out um, new ways. Like for example. Um, of course, we all have the 5D, and, and and I think that there's a lot of valuable parts to the 5D. You know, um, I think it's sometimes, I, I mean, I'm also very intimidated um, whenever my principal comes in with their laptop, I'm, you know, there's this little bit of fear that kind of comes in, and even though sure. I, yeah. you know, I have the lessons all set and so on, it doesn't really, and you're never quite sure might what might come out of, you know, some of your students, you know, what they might say, <laughs> but um, but you know, you always want the best, you know, you want everyone to to um, perform well and look well, and when your principal's in the classroom, and 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 truthfully, I've never, I can't say I've ever really had a bad experience with being observed. But it doesn't make a difference even after 30 years. I still feel that, you know, that bit of um, being uh, a little on the nervous side, yeah. a little bit of on the nervous side. But, but other ways of also, you know, um, you know, you evaluate yourself. And, um, and, and sometimes even when I'm teaching, co-teaching with another teacher, you know, you're, you feel like that, you know, you want to um, just be sure that, you um, you're always learning and growing. Um, but another way uh, that was new, too, more recently, is um, I have given my students student perception surveys. And I have found that to be um, very interesting to see, like, you know, what my thoughts on what they might come back with and, and um, you know, how, um, uh, how I'm portrayed within the classroom is um, sometimes um, – really unique on what their comments are. And I, I find it, and, and that was part of what I did send back when I, uh, like, for example, I asked the students, um, um, how often does this teacher take time to make sure that, you're under, that you've understood the material? And to have their, but I even allowed for them to, um, to comment and, and put their own comments in, which, um, you know, overall, how high are this teacher's expectations of you? And one of them said, expects me to do my best all the time. And, you know, and, and instead of, and just went off on their own. But anyways, that that to me um, is probably some of the most valuable feedback is to hear what their thoughts are. Right. Because you can take that and then, you know, and, and um, there were some areas that I thought, okay, well, I definitely need to make sure that I'm, um, you know, um, how eager are you to participate, or how can this? How could your teacher better help you participate in the classroom? You know, and so some of their answers I'd like to take to heart and um, and feel that this part um, was um, is really rewarding in a lot of ways to have. But when the te- when the prompt was asked of me by the state, you know, about evaluation, um, like I said, it made me really just think about all the different areas that we are being evaluated in and. And, um, but each has their own positives and perhaps even negatives as to, um, you know, and, and, uh, and evaluation. Excellent. Can you tell me, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot here a little bit, but can you tell me about some of the, some of the su- success stories of some of your students 
at maybe after graduation or kind of after they've aged out of the system? Sure. Um, well, um, absolutely. And, you know, in working with the students with cognitive disabilities, I've had, for example, when I was at Parkdale, um, some of the students that I had there actually followed me right up to Northeast. So there were a couple of students that I had seven, eight years in a row because, you know, they are in a semi-self-contained classroom type of a setting. Um, but so you really become close with the families when you have their child that long. And, um, and when I was newly hired, um, you know, it wasn't um, rare that I would even, you know, hang out with some of the families after school and, and, um, and even and with the parents too because they become family, like family as well. Um, at one point at Parkdale, I had, um, I believe, eight paraprofessionals in the classroom. And, wow. um, and still today, um, I'm very close with many of them. And yeah. so those, those bonds are, are um, you know, really unique, and, and I've enjoyed that over the years. Um, but um, as far as success stories, um, so one student in particular that I can think of, um, when the floods in 2020 hit, when that flood of 2020 hit, this family... I, I knew of. Um, I had their son in school um, in, in outside of school because finding babysitters is sometimes very difficult for these families. So um, there, some of them wouldn't even, um, wouldn't, didn't per- do well with someone that they weren't familiar with. Sure. And so I did respite care outside of school time to um, you know, to give some of these families a break. Oh, wow. um, and so this one family in particular became very close. So when the flood hit of 2020, her, um, she had lost her husband. And so I knew that her hands were going to be full. And she lived in like right where the, the floods were some of the, the, the worst area where yeah. in Midland and Sturgeon Creek Parkway area, oh. which was really wow. devastated. Like, it, And so um, so trying to make sure that she was evacuated and so on and all that. And their house was, it was, the destruction was so great, they actually walked away from it and have, and they've since moved to Texas and still keep in touch with them even down there. But um, the, those stories, I'm sure, there's Jeez. so many of them. And But I think when you have a student with special needs and you're trying to also go through that, um, and he is severely multiply impaired, um, you know, it, I um, that was it makes it even more, the, the difficulty even more compounding. But, um, but anyway, so, uh, you know, his success story, um, he, uh, what I would like for most of my families and for my parents is that, um, you know, um, I encourage our students to um, transition into housing, you know, and because even though they might have various levels of, of disabilities, um, we still want them to um, reach their highest level of independence. And for many of them, you know, that might be living in a group home or maybe in an apartment situation where they're sharing it um, with a roommate and someone needs to just come in and check on them or um, help them make their meals. But, um, but you know, we always encourage our students to um, try to reach the highest level of independence in Often that that would mean for them to um, to live on their own, and luckily in our community, um, our you know we have the um, uh, various um, agencies to help facilitate that even past post secondary programs. So, um, but I I would say that um, that you know the majority of our students do reach that, and to me. That is our whole purpose of our programming through the schools is to help them reach that level. And, and when we see that happen and I, I run into them when there's the music on downtown on Main Street and I see them dancing and I get to, you know, you know interact with them in that, in that different light, um, that's, that just brings a lot of great joy to see them um, out in the community and enjoying life. I think we understate the, the idea of students with special needs living out on their own and having a life after school or you know, moving out, uh, just being independent. And um, that's that, that's your whole job pretty much is, is <laughs> making sure that they can live independently outside of their family or, or being able to keep a job. Uh, I imagine you guys do a lot of teaching with soft skills. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, 
Yes, it is. It's it's what we definitely, that's our big end goal is for students to be um, independent in our community. Um, I love to hear about what, um, you know, we have many different businesses in our community that also open their arms to um, having students with disabilities work for them. And so, yeah, it's an absolute joy when you walk into a restaurant and you see one of them helping out in any way and um, or, you know, walking into Walgreens and seeing them, you know, um, participating there as well. But um, I think that, you know, for all of us, work um, brings um, satisfaction. It brings us, um, you know, enjoyment. And it also has a socialization part to it. And so it is important for them to um, be integrated fully into our community. And luckily, we have a community that welcomes them with open arms. Let's... Let's change uh, change gears a little bit and talk about the the experience. Last week you went down to Lansing, right? Right. Okay, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. So um, I'm sure probably the highlight of the year to um, be um, honored in front of the State Board of Education with Dr. Rice and the fellow nine regional teachers of the year. And also with um, our, the teacher of the year is Candace Jackson, Jackson, who is from Region 1, um, Detroit Public Schools, and she's just a phenomenal person. And we've already had opportunities for us to come together as a group of 10 and, um, and you know, work on various um, topics that are impacting education now. And, and so I can tell by these meetings that we've taken place that there's going to be a lot of really good things that come out of it this year and so um, but we will be meeting once a uh, month with the um, the State Board of Education and also on a couple of other um, uh, um, we have a couple of other meetings as well with um, various um, agencies that they've put us in touch with. I, and I don't want to ignore that because that's the reason you're here. The state of Michigan is divided up into 10 regions. Right. So, and you you won the the region for Michigan Teacher of the Year, which is you know, for the cameras that whole mid Michigan area, central Michigan area. Correct. It's a pretty big honor. I I can't remember if we've had another teacher that. Do you know of the any the history? Yeah. So yeah, I did. Um, I did look. I don't. I don't have that. That information in front of me uh, but yes fine. we I did I believe again. back in like <laughs> the, in, in, in in the 90s I okay. believe it might have been like 95 we did have um, a teacher of the year from um, Midland Public Schools if I'm not mistaken okay. and so um, and yeah so I, I I wish I did know more I wish I could have brought that with me but well, I would have loved to have shared more of that too but but yeah so that was um, you know I I um, in the different regions of this from this around the state um you know some of them obviously are even coming from the upper peninsula right. so that's quite a travel to yeah. come on down and for for every meeting that we need to get together luckily you know zooms um help facilitate some of that as well but but we do try and they're going to be trying to have us all come together in person as much as possible I kind of sprung it on you, I, you know, with the history of the award and stuff. But this is a pretty big deal, and and yeah. uh, we're proud of you, and and I know your family is proud of you. And I, I just thought this was really really cool, and I, I this is the best way I knew how to highlight you and, yeah, and the achievement. Yes. Well, absolutely, and thank you for asking me to be on. It's an honor to be here. I've um, I just feel very fortunate to have had the career I've had. Uh, working for Midland Public Schools, um, I couldn't have been more thrilled when Brad Vandervliet asked me to come up and interview. And it's um, just been, um, you know, like I said, a great ride for my entire time and all the different schools I've had an opportunity to be in, all the teachers I've had an opportunity to work with. Um, and, you know, and, and I think that we just become better educators by taking time to be in each other's classrooms and share the wealth of information that, that each of us, you know, our strengths and so on, so that um, we can take it back to our own classroom. And um, and so that's definitely has helped me. And, and I'm just, um, like I said, I I think that, um, that, you know, Midland Public Schools has 
many teachers that could probably also uh, be in the same position. But it's, uh, but yeah, so, but it's, I just do feel humbled and honored to be able to represent our region and um, in our district in our, in my, my high school. Bridget Silva, Region 4 Michigan Teacher of the Year. Thank you so much for being here. I know this is a crazy time of year. And I mean, what time of the year is not crazy for teachers, but especially the very beginning of the year. So thank you for being here and making time for us. Thank you very much. All right, that's our show. Thanks, everybody. Do you have an idea for a podcast? Email us at communications at midlandps.org.